Hello and welcome. Proof that a ballistic recovery parachute can save your life was demonstrated on May 12 of this year. A Cirrus SR22 collided with a Fairchild Swearingen Metroliner in America. The Metroliner landed safely despite a great chunk missing from its fuselage. The pilot of the damaged Cirrus deployed the parachute. Neither pilots nor passenger were injured. This mid-air collision occurred about three miles north of the threshold of runway 17 left at Denver Centennial Airport. This airport is located a few miles southeast of the city of Denver in Colorado. The Metroliner Key Lime Air 970 was inbound on a visual approach to runway 17 left while the Cirrus, approaching from the northwest, was given runway 17 right. There is only about 700 feet separating the two runways. Weather at the time of the accident was a few scattered clouds with good visibility. The Cirrus November 416 Delta Juliet was cleared to land runway 17 right and the pilot was informed that the Metroliner was inbound for the left runway. The control tower was operating on two different frequencies, one for controller working traffic on the left runway on one frequency and another working traffic for the right runway. The two pilots would have been unable to hear each other's radio transmissions. Continuing inbound, the Cirrus pilot on a right base to the right runway reported the Metroliner in sight. Flight radar show the Metroliner on a straight-in approach to the left at 118 knots. The SR-22 on the base was indicating 170 knots. Wow! As the Cirrus approached the airport for the right one way, the tower audio indicated the controller noticed an unsafe situation developing and he reminded the Cirrus pilot not to stray towards 17 left. Immediately after that warning, the controller asked the Cirrus pilot if he needed assistance. Cirrus 6 Delta Julia traffic at your 1 to 2 o'clock a mile, about to turn base as a Skyhawk 6800. Uh, looking for traffic, 6 Delta Juliet. There's 6 Delta Juliet, fly towards the west shore of Cherry Creek. The west shore of Cherry Creek for 6 Delta Juliet. There's 6 Delta Juliet, follow them, Romeo 17 right, cleared to land. Additional traffic, north shore is the metro line up for the parallel. Have traffic in sight, clear to land, 17 right, 6 Delta Juliet. Sirius 6 Delta Juliet, do not overshoot the final. Sirius 6 Delta Juliet, do you require assistance? Sarah 6 Delta Julia, if you hear this transmission, we have emergency vehicles zero direction. The Metroliner pilot reported the right engine had failed, but managed to retain control of the severely damaged aircraft to a safe landing on 17 left. Tower, Kilo 970, declare an emergency. We had, um, looks like the right engine failed, so I'm going to continue my landing here. Kilo 970, we have crews come in, uh, continue inbound, runway 17 left, clear to land. Roger, there's an emergency in progress. Tower, that was a definite mid-air on short final. This four bit spot. Okay. Kilo, I'm 970. Do you need any assistance? I'm going to taxi off here, and I think I'll just park over and signature. I'm good, though. Neither pilot reported the collision. News photos show that about 30% of the Metroliner's cabin was torn away in the collision with the SR-22. The Key Lime Air is an all-cargo operation, so there were no passengers on board. Both aircraft had ADSB. First alerted by the tower, firefighters and police also fielded calls from many eyewitnesses who saw the two aircraft collide around 10.25 a.m. that morning. The pilot of the Metroliner requested an emergency landing for engine failure not knowing that his plane was nearly ripped in half, according to air traffic control audio. Federal Aviation Administration records show aircraft operated by Key Lime Air have been involved in three fatal crashes. In 2016, a Key Lime Air charter plane on a nighttime flight from Panama City, Florida, to Albany, Georgia, crashed after possibly breaking up in midair as the lone pilot on board tried to navigate severe weather near Camellia, Georgia. 
In 2001, a Key Lime air flight crashed about 48 kilometres off the southern Colorado town of Pagosa Springs, killing two people on board. In 2002, pilots aboard a Key Lime Air Piper were killed after crashing near Kiowa, Colorado, southeast of Denver. In this latest accident, I'm guessing that the burden of proof will fall upon the Cirrus pilot to prove he wasn't in the wrong. As this was a flight training school aircraft, was the passenger a flight instructor? Interesting. Thank you for watching. To promote content, it would be appreciated if you could like and subscribe.